Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to get the variables in place. Um, because I think it will be easier when we're actually filling out the functions, rather than having to move backwards and forwards and create new variables. We'll just get them all in place in one lesson. And then when we come to fill out the functions, we can actually just focus on that function alone. So I'm going to come right at the very top. And actually I should have added, if I come up here, our normal comments. So I'll just add that in now. And I believe I created this on the 9th. So I'll put that in. And then I'll come here, right at the very top. And we'll begin by creating a public int underscore. And we're going to call this selected button. We're going to say it's going to be equal to zero. And we'll close the line off. And we'll say it defines selected GUI button now please don't worry if you do not understand even after commenting these variables what these variables actually do because we'll cover that when we actually come to using them later in the script so we'll continue on by creating a public of type float this time and we're going to call this underscore time between, uh, we'll say button press. And we're going to say it's equal to 0.1f. We'll close the line off because this only needs to be a very small value. And we'll say defines delay time between button presses. public float underscore time delay let's close the line off we do not want to put a value into this float and as I said you'll see why when we come to using it but for now let's get the comment in place we'll say defines delay and we'll say variable time or value actually I'll put so let's come here, we'll create of type public of type float. Underscore, we'll say main menu. And we'll say vertical timer. In fact, I'm going to put vertical input timer. Let's close the line off into the comments. So again, no value assigned at this point. We'll say defines vertical input timer. Public float main menu vertical input delay. Let's close that line off again. In fact, we we'll can assign the value here. Well, we'll assign it as equal 1f. Let's close the line off. So we'll say it defines vertical input delay. We'll create a line break at this point. So public. And we want of type texture 2D. And we'll just call this underscore main menu background. We'll close the line off. Now I'm sure you're all aware of what this actually does. But we'll put it in the comments anyway. Create slot in inspector to assign main menu background and just a word of note 
you'll probably want to go ahead and create a background texture so we can actually assign it and if you want to do that before the next lesson or the you know before the coming lessons before we actually finish the main menu script so I'll leave that up for you guys to create with that we'll come below here and this can be of type private actually audio source and I should mention that we can actually make these private at a later date but I'm going to leave them public for now so if we need to adjust the values or in the case of these variables to actually uh, see how the variable works I'm going to make them public just for the time being so private audio source underscore main menu audio let's close that line off and we'll say defines naming convention uh, for the main menu audio and we'll put component actually audio component will come below again public this time audio clip underscore main menu music and we'll close the line off into the comments create slot in inspector to assign main menu music so <clears throat> much like the texture 2d um, you will need audio clips so you know there's plenty available online or on the asset store but um, as I said in the meantime before the coming lessons you'll probably want to go ahead and actually find some appropriate music and audio actual well we actually if I copy and paste that line in we're going to need some sort of sound effects so music and sound effects I'm just copying and pasting that line in and let's in fact we'll alter it here we'll change this one to main menu we'll say start button audio and we'll just change it here and we'll just change that main menu start button audio and let's copy and paste that line and we'll change start to quit and we'll also change it here in the comment and we'll come below here now I am going to make these um, yeah let's make these private to begin with and we'll say main menu fade value we'll close the line off into the comments we'll say defines fade value private float main menu fade speed and I'm going to make this equal to let's try 0. Point, we'll try 15f let's close the line off so we'll say defines fade speed um yeah in fact I'm going to make these public just so we can see them working in the inspector actually but um you you can make them private once we actually finish the main menu script and you've done any tweaking to the values that you may want to do so we have these in so we're going to have the main menu sort of fade in and fade out so these ones here 
these are going to handle how we're going to select the buttons using the controller and as I said please don't worry if you don't understand how these are going to work it will all be explained in the coming videos and I think these ones are pretty self-explanatory so let's come here we'll create of type public of type float and we'll say main menu button width we'll make this equal to 100f let's close the line off into the comments we'll say defines main menu button width size and we'll just keep going public float and I'm sure you've guessed this is going to be for the height so exactly the same but we'll change this to height and we'll make this equal to 25F. Let's close that line off. And we'll say it defines main menu button height size. Let's come below here. And yeah, we'll make this public for now. Public float main menu GUI offset I'm going to make mine equal to 10 let's close that line off defines main menu GUI offset and the last few variables now so um, these can actually be of type private to begin with and they'll be of type bool starting one player game let's close that line off defines if we are starting a one player game we'll copy that we'll paste it in and again I'm sure you've guessed we're just going to change that to two and we'll also change it into the comment. And finally, private bool underscore quitting game. Let's close that line off. Into the comments, defines if we are quitting the game. And of course, we will have to come back and add more variables when we actually come to do the options menu. But um, currently, I'm planning to come back to the options menu at a later date because I think um, you want to get to something where you can actually sit with a controller and play it, play the game even if it's only in an early stage and then we'll come back and do things like the options menu to really flesh this out to make it feel like a more professional product to your game but um, let's get something up and running first and then all them little extras will come back and then we'll add in at the end of the series so that's all the variables we'll need for the moment and I think we'll leave it there for this lesson. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time and until then, as always, bye for now.